A serious air crash occurred in Washington state. A plane full of passengers suddenly broke down not long after takeoff, eventually crashed on a beach. Most of the passengers were died, only five people miraculously survived. In order to help these survivors get out of the shadow of the accident, the airline hires a beautiful psychiatrist to provide psychological treatment for them. But as the treatment progresses, the survivors disappear mysteriously, one by one. The psychiatrist is becoming more suspicious that there is something wrong about the crash. Today, let's dive into a suspenseful thriller. Passengers. Claire is a young and beautiful psychiatrist. This evening, Claire is startled by a nightmare. She dreamed that a plane crashed on a beach. All passengers died on that airplane crash. After waking up, Claire receives a call from her mentor. To her surprise, the instructor tells her that a serious plane crash has just occurred. Of the 109 passengers, only five survived and the rest were dead. Miraculously, these five people only have some minor injuries, but they're all frightened. Some people also experience confusion memory. The airline contacted her mentor, asking him to provide psychological counseling to surviving passengers. The instructor then gave this task to Claire. What's strange? This accident is very similar to Claire's nightmare last night. Claire rushes to the hospital without thinking too much. But all the survivors have all fallen asleep. Only Eric is still awake. Eric looks a little excited when he sees Claire and starts talking about random things. It doesn't look like he just experienced a plane crash. Claire quickly explains her intention. She will organize a group discussion to provide psychological counseling for the survivors. But Eric says that he is very healthy and refuses the invitation. Claire thinks that he might need more care than that, so she makes an one-on-one -on -one appointment with him for psychotherapy. Just when Claire is about to say goodbye and leave, Eric suddenly stops her and says, You'd better call your sister soon, so that you don't regret when unexpected things happen. Claire feels surprised. She does have a sister, but they haven't contacted for a long time since the fierce quarrel last time. Eric's words obviously mean something, but she has never met Eric before. How could he know that she has a sister? Claire returns home with doubts. Tony, who lives next door knocks on her door sending the clothes that Claire put in the laundry room for cleaning and drying. Then Tony tells Claire that she will be here for her anytime. Although they are neighbors, the two have never met before. Tony's excessive enthusiasm makes Claire very confused, so she politely declines her kindness. After sending away Tony, Eric's advice echoes on her mind. So she decides to call her sister, but no one answers the phone. Claire holds the therapy as scheduled next day. Except Eric, the other survivors attended. Claire starts to guide everyone to recall the accident. Dean, whose arm is injured, recalls the plane explodes before crashing. He heard a strange noise and saw a flashing light. But Norman claims that the plane crashed into the beach before the fire and explosion occurred. Shannon also echoes that the explosion happened after the crash. But she says, before the plane crashed, someone looked out the window with a horrified expression, so something terrible must have happened at that time. But she didn't see clearly what it was. Another survivor, Janice, says she can't remember anything. Just when everyone is arguing, Claire notices a strange man in a black coat standing outside the window. He is staring at them. It seems that he is monitoring their conversation. Then the man hurriedly leaves. The strangely behaved man brings today's therapy to an end. Later, Claire finds Arkin, the executive of the airline company, providing infos for airlines to help analyzing the cause of the accident. But Arkin says, the cause of the accident has been confirmed. The crash was caused by improper pilot operation, it has nothing to do with the explosion. But when her eyes lands on the files inside the briefcase, Arkin quickly covers up the briefcase as if he is hiding something. Claire's doubts about the crash are growing bigger and bigger, but the work must continue. After saying goodbye to Arkin, she comes to Eric's house as agreed for one-on-one -on -one psychological counseling. But Eric suddenly changes his mind, repeatedly emphasizing that he is not a patient. During the conversation, Eric clearly shows his intention to pursue Claire. Even the coffee prepared for her is Claire's favorite flavor. Things seem to get even more weird. Claire doesn't know Eric, but he obviously knows her very well. The conversation between the two becomes awkward, so Claire gives the address of the therapy and prepares to leave. Before leaving, she suggests it would be the best for Eric to participate in the group treatment. But when the second treatment begins, not only does Eric not come, even Dean isn't there. Just when Claire is about to leave, Norman hurriedly gets into her car. He is saying that someone is following him. While speaking, he points to a figure in the darkness. They finds out that the figure is the man in black coat who has been spying on them before. 
Norman tells Claire that the man must be sent by the airline company. These days, he finally recalls some details before the plane crashed. Just like Dean said, there were indeed strange noises and sparks. The cause of the air crash may have been a mechanical failure rather than the pilot's operation. Norman speculates that the airline must have lied about the cause of the accident, but Claire doesn't understand why the airline would tell such lies. Norman explains, this kind of mechanical failure also happened to another plane last year. If it happens again, airlines are bound to get public condemnation, that's why they put the blame on the pilot's improper operation. Norman even suspects that Dean may have been controlled by the airline, and it's his turn to be the next target. Of course, Claire doesn't believe his nonsense statement. Airlines are not gangsters. How could it be possible to engage in such a business of kidnapping and killing? She thinks that Norman still hasn't recovered from the shadow of the plane crash. That's why he has these elusive ideas. Claire then drives Norman home. Who knows? The next day, Norman doesn't come either. Two survivors who remembers the details of the accident are absent in succession. Claire begins to believe that the airline is hiding something. She quickly tells her mentor what happened. But her mentor thinks, just because two people didn't come to therapy doesn't mean they are in trouble. Maybe they just don't want to attend anymore. Claire comforts herself that her mentor said makes sense. Then she decides to ask Norman in person and the reason why he stopped coming. The door of his house is unlocked. There's no one inside. Just as Claire is about to drive away, she sees the man in the black coat again. Claire is scared that he might do horrible things. Unexpectedly, the man asks Claire to help him. It turns out that he is also a plane crash survivor. But after the accident, he lost his memory and couldn't even remember who he was. The reason why he follows everyone is he is trying to figure out what's going on. The man tells Claire, he also remembers that there was an explosion before the plane crashed. Then Claire immediately takes the man to confront Arkin, asking him about the real cause of the plane crash. And where is Dean and Norman? Suddenly, the man in the black coat seems to recognize Arkin, and he steps forward to grab Arkin's collar, then saying something inexplicable. You son of a bitch. What did you do? After hearing this, Arkin pushes the man away in a panic. Just when Claire is about to stop him, the man in the black coat is miraculously disappeared. She hurriedly looks around for him, but he seems to have evaporated from the world, disappeared in front of her. In the evening, Claire comes to the treatment group again. This time, only Shannon is present. Janice, who was there last time, is also absent. Meanwhile, Shannon looks terrified. She claims that a middle-aged couple has just been watching her furtively outside the window. Just when Claire is full of conspiracy theories, Eric suddenly comes over, saying he finally remembers everything. He says the plane's engine caught fire and exploded, triggering the crash. Now, all three of them are sure that there is indeed something wrong with the airline. They decide to come to Claire's house, letting Shannon who is mentally collapsed go to sleep. In the middle of the night, a dog suddenly barks outside the house. Eric recognizes that the dog is actually his own. But that dog died when Eric was very young. How does it appear here? Suddenly, a bizarre idea comes across him. Maybe he already died in the plane crash, that's why he can see his dog. In order to verify his conjecture, he ignores Claire's dissuasion and runs onto a train track. Then Claire sees with her own eyes. The high-speed train is passing through his body, but Eric is unharmed. Claire is stunned on the spot. This is all too ridiculous. Then she returns home in confusion. Out of the blue, her neighbor Tony appears at her home, and Shannon, who is sleeping on the bed, now disappears. Claire is so confused that she asks Tony where Shannon is. She explains that Shannon has been taken home by her parents. But Claire remembers that Shannon said her parents died in accidents when she was six years old. Is Shannon lying? Or is Tony lying? Claire's mind is about to explode, then comes to her tutor's house for help, telling him all the strange things she encountered. She also concludes that the airline is responsible for everything, but her mentor tells Claire that's not true. Claire immediately suspects that her mentor was bribed by the airline, so she slams the door angrily and walks away. As soon as she left, her neighbor Tony walks out from the darkness. The two of them obviously know each other, and they are hiding something from Claire. Claire, who is on the verge of a breakdown, comes to her sister's home. She is the only person she trusts in her life. She wants to tell her all the strange things she has been through, but no one is at home. Suddenly, the airline executive Arkin appears. He tells Claire that no one is missing at all. Because there were no survivors in the plane crash, everyone died. There is no conspiracy on the part of the airlines. It's all caused by the pilots and porper operations. After leaving a document, he then walks away. Opening the file. 
Claire finds out that her name is also on the list of victims. Finally, she recalls everything. She was also a passenger on the plane. Eric was sitting next to her, and fell in love with her at first sight. The two chatted happily, so she told Eric her personal information. The real identity of Arkin is not an airline executive, but the pilot of that plane. Shortly after the plane took off, Arkin turned on the autopilot mode. Then he ran to the cabin and flirted with the stewardess. The engine suddenly caught fire and exploded. It's already too late, when Arkin found out. It was precisely because of his dereliction of duty that caused irreparable consequences. That's why the man in the black coat said those words. What did you do? Eventually, the plane lost control and crashed on the beach. No passengers or crew were spared. Eric, Claire and others lost their memory about death. This is not the world of the living, but the world of the dead. So Claire can't get through her sister's phone and can't find her. Those people who look weird are the guides to the dead. Shannon was guided by the middle-aged couple. They are her parents who have passed away when she was six. Eric's guide was the dead dog. Claire's guides are her mentor and her neighbor Tony. Their true identities are Claire's elementary school teacher and her closest grandma when she was a child. In the end, Claire accepts the truth also accepts Eric's pursuit. They choose to start a new life in the world of the dead. The story then ends here. This movie reminds me a rumor about people after death. Some people believe that after people die, they would still be lingering around the real world without knowing their death, until they find out their own funeral. Guides from the dead world can also guide to the their next lives, but it's up to them whether to stay. What would be your choice? Thanks for watching, see you next time.